Internal Revenue Service, IRS tax news. IRS Georgia, Alabama storm victims qualify for tax relief. April 18th deadline. Other dates extended to May 15th. It's been raining like crazy over here in California too. The other day I was singing that classic old song. It's raining, it's pouring. And then after I got to the old man is snoring, the neighborhood kids chimed in singing, the old man snoring, let's assault him. And it's like, hey, wait a second. That's, that's not how the song goes. I mean, honestly, what, what the hell is wrong with kids these days? Now I can see how the old man bumped his head and couldn't wake up in the morning. The dang kids bumped his head while he was snoring. Honestly, like, with all this rain, I'm starting to think God is rethinking that whole no more mass floods promise thing he made. Possibly partially due to certain people hoarding that rainbow symbol. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure the rainbow was made for everyone. Because like human beings are designed to enjoy colors, you know, unless... It looks like they're colorblind or something. I mean, dang color hoarders. Like, I remember when I had to deal with those gangs that had, they like had a color that they claimed as like their color. Like, red or blue is our color. And it's like, okay, that's lame. But whatever. I mean, they were very insistent. So it's like, okay, I got what. But, but having a gang that claims every color in the rainbow as theirs. I mean, that's going too far. I mean, what, what are the rest of us supposed to do? Everyone walk around like Mark Zuckerberg in a gray shirt, as if we're some kind of robot. I mean, it's ridiculous. Honestly, it, it's gotten so bad. I think there's a market out there for gray Skittles these days. So, if they, I mean, if they put a pack of gray Skittles out there on the market, people would like flock to it. And they're like, finally, I can enjoy Skittles again without having to claim any kind of gang affiliation. Although, eating a gray Skittle doesn't sound the same. I mean, I mean, I know the colors don't really matter, and a purple Skittle doesn't really taste like a grape or anything, but would it really be the same experience if you ate like a purple Skittle that was, that was gray? I don't, I, but whatever. Anyways, on to the news. IR 2023-09, January 19th, 2023, Washington. Storm victims in parts of Georgia and Alabama now have until May 15th, 2023 to file various federal, individual, and business tax returns and make tax payments. The Internal Revenue Service announced today the IRS is offering relief to any area designated by the Federal Emergency Management Agency, otherwise known as FEMA. There's a link to that here. This means that individuals and households that reside or have a business in i'll probably mispronounce some of these items here but there'll be a link to this in the description and you have a link here as well to the fema page so if there's any updates to them you can check the list there so butts honray jasper merriweather newton spalding and Troup counties in georgia and alabama and dallas counties in alabama qualify for tax relief other areas added later to the disaster area will also qualify for the same relief the current list of eligible localities is available on tax relief in disaster situations so there's a link to that here if you want to check that out in more detail the tax relief postpones various tax filing and payment deadlines that occur starting on January 12, 2023. As a result, affected, affected individuals and businesses will have until May 15, 2023 to file returns and pay any taxes that were originally due during this period. This includes 2022 individual income tax returns due on April 18th, as well as various 2022 business returns normally due on March 15th and April 18th. Among other things, this means that eligible taxpayers will have until May 15th to make 2022 contributions to their IRAs, IRAs, and health savings accounts. So in addition, farmers who choose to forego making estimated tax payments and normally file their returns by May, March 1st will now have until May 15th, 2023 to file their 2022 return and pay any tax due. The May 15th, 2023 deadline also applies to quarterly estimated tax payments normally due on January 17th, 2023 and April 18th, 2023. 
This means that individual taxpayers can skip making the fourth quarter estimated tax payment normally due January 17th, 2023, and instead include it with the 2022 return they file on or before May 15th. The May 15th deadline also applies to quarterly payroll and excise tax returns normally due on January 31st and April 30th, 2023. In addition, penalties on payroll and excise tax deposits due on or after January 12th, 2023 and before January 27th, 2023 will be abated as long as the tax deposits are made by January 27th, 2023. The Disaster Assistance and Emergency Relief for Individuals and Business page, there's a link to that here, has details on other returns, payments, and tax-related questions qualifying for the additional time. The IRS automatically provides filing and penalty relief to any taxpayer with an IRS address of record located in the disaster area. Therefore, taxpayers do not need to contact the agency to get this relief. However, if an affected taxpayer receives a late filing or late payment penalty notice from the IRS that has an original or extended filing payment or deposit due date falling within the postponement period, the tax payment taxpayer payers should call the number on the notice to have the penalty abated. So in other words, if you're in the affected area, they should have the records of that because they have the address and they should apply the extensions automatically. But if they mess up, send you a letter for penalties and interest, which should not have been done due to the fact of this extension, then of course you need to contact them, use the letter uh, with the contact information on it. Otherwise you might be on hold for about 20 years or something like that, even though they hired like a million more IRS agents. So in addition, the IRS will work with any taxpayer who lives outside the disaster area, but whose records necessary to meet a deadline occurring during the postponement period are located in the affected area. Taxpayers qualifying for relief who live outside the disaster area need to contact the IRS at 866-562-5227. I won't say that a hundred times because there'll be a link to this in the description. You can check it out on your own. And clearly, if you are outside the disaster area but have records in it, then they're not going to be able to apply the extensions automatically to you because it's going to be based on the records that they have, the address that they have. So you're going to have to contact them in that situation if you want to get the extension. Here's the contact information. This also includes workers assisting the relief activities who are affiliated with a recognized government or philanthropic organization. Individuals and businesses in a federally declared disaster area who suffered uninsured or unreimbursed disaster related losses can choose to claim them on their on either the return for the year the loss occurred in this instance. 2023 return normally filed next year or the return for the prior year 2022 normally filed this tax season so we've got the issue happening this time if there's tax implications then you've got this choice to make and considerations to make on that is well where's the biggest tax benefit you're going to have and when can i get that benefit when i need it so obviously if you need the tax benefit uh, sooner and there's going to be a significant tax benefit you want to take it on the earlier year that you can and if you haven't filed like most people haven't for 2022 that might be the easiest uh, thing to do uh, or you can take it you know in the year that the that the, the event happened in this case uh, 2023 so there's kind of issues on tax issues if you're looking at total tax benefit then you might want to look at the year that has more income in it so Oftentimes, if there's a disaster, people's income are going to be lower in the year of the disaster because that's the whole that's the whole point here. And so that would mean that their taxes are going to be lower. So in this case, it would be 2023. If you think your income is going to be sub substantially uh, hampered in 2023, then getting a tax benefit lowering your income isn't going to be as beneficial because you'll be in lower tax brackets anyways. So then you might want to apply it to the prior year, in this case, 2022, if you can, to get more of the benefit. However, many people are coming out of a recession or a, you know, a COVID induced problem in their situation with work and wages prior in prior years. So you might think even do even with the disaster, you might be making more money in 2023 than 2022 due to other circumstances, in which case you might want to take it in 2023, even though you'd have to wait for it uh, until you file 2023 in the following year by April 15th, 2024. Okay. 
So be sure to write the FEMA declaration number, which is 4684DR for Alabama and 4685DR for Georgia on any return claiming a loss. See publication 547. There's a link to that for details. The tax relief is part of a coordinated federal response to the damage caused by these storms and is based on local damage assessments by FEMA. For information on disaster recovery, you can visit disasterassistance.gov. There's a link to that here. There's a link to the publication. There's a link to the FEMA page. There's links all over the place on this to valuable information. And there'll be a link to this in the description.